Thank you so much. Magandang umaga. As highlighted in the earlier presentation, social protection includes many different instruments, including cash transfer, social safety net, labor market interventions, and social insurance and services. Among these, social assistance is the most common in the Philippines. The Panta with Familiar Filipino Program, the four Ps, Social Amelioration Program, SAP, Social Pension for the Indigent Elderly are among very well-known programs, and they play very important roles in protecting poor and vulnerable households in the time of crisis. The country may be transitioning out of the pandemic, but it is exposed to frequent shocks and disasters. In this context, it is critical to look back and review social assistance response to the pandemic and reflect on the lessons to build resilience for future shocks. The COVID-19 pandemic was not a monotone event. As you may recall, there were multiple phases of the pandemic varying by the health policy environment, including the knowledge on the virus, vaccine availability, as well as lockdown measures. During the initial lockdown period, when the Philippines used more stringent measures than other countries, a large scale social amelioration program was introduced over two trenches, building on existing programs, including four Ps. During the later phase of the pandemic, localized ayuda, mostly in kind support like food packs and the assistance to individuals in crisis situation became the main response mechanisms. Our study used multiple nationally representative data to capture households' well-being and program implementation. Some of the key aspects that I will present today include social um, assistance coverage, adequacy, targeting, and delivery of social assistance programs. The government has only finite resources. Therefore, covering as many households as possible with an adequate and meaningful amount of benefits within the budget is critical. For that purpose, targeting the poorest and most vulnerable households and providing benefits in an efficient manner is necessary. So let's look into these four dimensions one by one. So the first on coverage, globally, as the graph indicates, countries with greater pandemic shocks tend to implement cash transfer with a larger coverage, reflecting the political economy of social assistance. The Philippines experienced a greater reduction of GDP per capita growth compared with the other regional peers and the government introduced a large scale program. While the program's coverage rates differ by data sources, the Philippines coverage is quite large, greater than regional peers. Rapid contingency financing to support the program of this scale through Bayanian laws was very impressive. Such social assistance played an important role in mitigating the negative shock of economic downturn due to COVID-19 lockdown measures. The World Bank estimates suggest that the poverty rate could have increased even further by two percentage points, meaning that close to 2 million additional individuals could have fallen into poverty without social assistance measures. However, given the sheer magnitude of shocks and prolonged period of the pandemic, social assistance fell short of the daunting need. In fact, despite the transfers, a huge share of households reported income declines, hunger, and mental health issues due to the pandemic. The impact was also quite heterogeneous by region. The regions that experienced a greater shock, such as NCR or Calabarzon, or those already in a deeper poverty like Barm express their economic distress and income declines. In light of these increasing needs in the middle of fiscal constraints, diminishing targeting performance is of concern. The first graph on top shows the distribution of four-piece beneficiaries by their income level. 
During the pilot stage of Four Peace in 2019, uh, 2009, almost 92% of Four Peace beneficiaries belong to the bottom 40% of income distribution, which is an outstanding figure globally. However, the share has declined over time, and by 2020, during the pandemic, only slightly over 60% of four-piece households are from the bottom 40%. Similarly, as the bottom graph shows that at an early stage of four-piece as a nationwide program in 2013, almost 60% of the poorest households were able to benefit from the program. But in 2020, only 35% of the poorest households benefit from the program. This indicates that there are many families outside for peace that need the program support, but they are unable to receive it. Thus, the program should be able to facilitate active graduation of better off families and enrollment of new families so households in the greatest needs can benefit. Despite diminishing targeting performance of 4Ps, indeed, 4Ps provides the most progressive support among available social assistance programs in the country. Other regular programs, including social pension and DSW relief, relatively speaking, show progressive support, although not as well targeted as 4Ps. However, if you look at the bottom graph, Social amelioration programs or LGUs, IUDA, or other NGO support seem significantly less well-targeted and sometimes even regressive. These findings show that objective targeting based on the social registry of Listanan provides a very solid basis for prioritization of poorer households, but with a lack of updates, in Listanan and limited dynamism, targeting performance has been diminishing over time. Finally, COVID-19 social amelioration program response greatly highlighted the need for enhancing social assistance delivery. The first trench of SAP experienced huge challenges with manual processes and physical cash delivery. Globally, Countries that had a national ID, registry, and digital payment mechanisms were able to deliver assistance quickly during the pandemic. When the pandemic hit the Philippines, there was no immediate mechanism to identify and verify vulnerable households. The national ID was not operational yet. Updated list Hanan was not available and a large share of people were unbent without access to digital payments. Learning from the first trench set, the second trench introduced digital cash delivery through six financial service providers for lack of clean database, beneficiary database, delayed implementation. Nonetheless, digital delivery of payments through large agent networks show very promising results for reducing travel, queuing, and processing time with very high beneficiary satisfaction. COVID-19 was already devastating, but during the same time, at the same time, the country went through African swine flu and typh uh, Typhoon Odette. Prices increased, uh, especially in fuel and food, uh, stemming from the war in Ukraine and looming global recession are again reminding that shocks are very frequent and repeated and that government response to help poor and vulnerable households should be swift and fair. This requires an efficient and adaptive social protection delivery systems. For this purpose, I'd like to highlight a few important areas for further strengthening. First, contingency financing mechanisms should be streamlined for better preparedness to the disasters. I agree with Dr. Roberta's assessment on the importance of simplifying the bureaucratic process of activating and using the calamity funds. Second, there should be a clean beneficiary and citizens database 
which facilitates better targeting identification of beneficiaries in the time of crisis. Recall that prioritizing those in the greatest needs enhances fiscal efficiency, meaning greater impact for peso spent. Third, distributing a large quantity of food packs to people in an untargeted manner is very prevalent in the country. However, it is quite inefficient. It is very important shift, important to shift the main mechanism from untargeted food assistance to targeted cash transfers as soon as the market becomes operational. Fourth, when delivering cash transfers using multiple financial service pri providers for digital payments will enhance greater access and convenience for beneficiaries. Utilizing the rapidly developing and growing digital finance ecosystem for government transfers will greatly help. Finally, overall delivery systems can be enhanced using digital tools. This does not mean that poor beneficiaries have to become internet experts. Rather, wherever feasible, the implementers use digital tools and platforms for swift response so they have sufficient time and energy to care for beneficiaries. Good news is that the National Foundation ID, the FILSIS, uh, the Philippine Identification System FILSIS, holds a key to many of these recommendations, and it has made huge progress during the pandemic. FILSIS is not just another ID. It is a foundational ID that should be universally available and usable. I'm aware that many people are waiting for the Phil ID cards, but in fact, more than the card itself, the FILSIS number that contains key information is what's important. The Philippine Statistics Authority should be expediting the use of mobile ID or QR code that works without the physical card. When the FILSIS is adopted by social assistance programs and processes, it can help clean up the database, establish the unified beneficiary database, facilitate the compilation of multiple sources of information for better and dynamic targeting, help information systems talk to each other, and enhance financial inclusion and digital payments. All of these and improved efficiency will free up the resources and reduce the hassles from paperwork, Enhance adaptiveness of social assistance response, which will strengthen the program's impact and improve citizens' well-being. Thank you so much for your attention.